This is Jerry Huguet. Hello, Gerald J. Huguet, mathematician and uh, thinker extraordinaire. So, uh, what do you think we're going to talk about today, Jerry? <laughs> uh, nothing, I hope. It's my uh, favorite subject. <laughs> Always has been. Yeah. So it's well, difficult. we were. Yeah. What were we talking about before um, uh, on the phone there? Um, you were mentioning something about. Well. Large let's numbers, or yeah, large numbers. But let's let's just have uh, start off our discussion about meta mathematics because I guess that's where you're really focusing your attention, isn't it, Jerry? Well, relatively. I mean, when I say large, I'm thinking of things that are unknown that yeah. can't be known. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but it's just a, in terms of mathematics, you, a term like large seems to make uh, more easy intuitive sense to people that know anything about mathematics. Right. Before so we, yeah, but before I'm talking about the mathematics of the unknown. Sure. So now the terminology... Metamathematics? Yeah. It's beyond... Beyond what mathematics... Ordinarily passes for mathematics. Even though to get there, you've possibly considered certain meanings mathematically. And all of a sudden you find yourself in a meaningless place relative to mathematics. Right. So, so I mean, who are the first math meta mathematicians in that sense? I mean, there's well, this would well, it would be like the very uh, beginnings of man, like the most beginnings of thinking, primitive thinking would entail this unknown. Right. Because they would be dealing in concepts that were known, like. Three tigers, one deer. Right. But beyond that, yeah, things became relatively unknown. Well, the 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 possibility, the possibility of something larger than that in terms of three and one is right there, present. In other words, they could have access to it. Mm -hmm. but they never conceived of the numbers that we're conceiving today. And yet, they come from that basic yeah. intuitive process of differentiating. Mm -hmm. Like, between, like, everybody knows the diff what the meaning of, uh, the meaning between one and unity. Like, <laughs> there's a meaning, there's a meaning, thing, meaning, between one and unity? Well, there's an, an, there's the meaning a meaning of the one? And like the range. Okay. That's encompassed between one and many. All right. So, in terms of, of what you've been working on mathematically, you're into <laughs> delving beyond uh, the normal mathematical explorations, I gather, and well, yes, like asking why, in terms of uh, geometry, why should there be that limitation in terms of our understanding of geometry that we can't construct a nine-sided polygon through, like a regular nine-sided polygon, through, through whatever method. <laughs> whatever, like the only method we know of currently is con the conceptual idea, the concept of a nine-sided figure. In other words, the meaning of it. We say that it has nine sides, and that the, the sides are joined, and these points of connection become are called vertices, and there's nine of them, and they're equidistant, distant from one another. Uh -oh. And they all lie in the circumference of a circle right. with a common center. That should be easy enough to do. Well, all people, yeah, well, like once you start, you know, a box, a triangle, and you can conceive of a nine-sided one, mm -hmm. but it can't be constructed. Well, maybe not through the axioms of geometry as they exist. Well, th exactly, because geometry has certain basic principles, and they are like a point. You know, a group of points. Right. You know, and they arrange themselves in a two-dimensional way. Okay. You know, even... All right. You know, and, and they form they form either a curved line or a straight line. All right. You know, I mean, 
Well, the point is, I guess, that when you're trying to put those points 40 degrees apart, which is what 360 degrees divided by 9 is, well, you, it turns you out like 40 degree the arc. process itself, like even as I'm describing it, when I say a point, like, like the, the tools that the ancient Greeks used, like the idea of a, of a compass to draw a curved line and a straight edge to draw a straight line, mm -hmm. like there's just these two things. And it turns out that these two things represent the possibilities of a point. Okay. In other words, a point can be expressed by either of these two means. And uh, that's on a all straight line or a curved line. Well, y yeah, you'll see them there. Like if you take a curved line and it intersects, a, like a, what is a point? Like a point doesn't really exist. It's kind of based on these other two things: this straight line and this curved line. Or, yeah. and it, and it's kind of uh, questionable about either one because it turns out that any construction uh, can be completed or can be created. Any construction created using just a compass can be created with just a straight edge. Any diagram, any geometry created just with a straight edge can also be reproduced with just a compass. Like they both can do what the other can do, right. but they both do something different. It's really strange. Yeah. Like you can draw an object, a form, with just a straight edge, mm -hmm. and you can construct that same form with a compass. And right. you can construct a, compass, a form with a compass, and that same form can be created with just a straight edge. Okay. Okay, but a point is only an indication of where these other basic concepts manifest. In other words, it's like well, that's where they intersect, right? Exactly. And it, all it is, but there's nothing there. Like there's no point there. They they, they represent you yeah. know they represent where these two things come together. But yeah. the it's point is just a it's theoretical. Yes, it doesn't exist. Okay. You know, well, so I mean, it's not something. Okay. Other than two things, it's like really a, a, a two, two things coming together. Two ideas. This other this one thing. Two ideas intersecting. Yeah. So it produces this third force right. called a point. Right. And now from that point, you can form all kinds of forms come from this point geometrically. Okay. You know, squares, eight-sided figures. Right. Angles, all kinds of things, and you see that they're all they're all based on this general construction. Okay. S so, <laughs> but because you you start off with doing two things. All right. And you create a third one. A third one, but it, because it's based on two, this number nine. Like some people have noticed, like, and when they say it can't be done, all they've been able to do is notice common properties of it. Uh, of that which can be done and properties that are different based on what can't be done. And, and you know, and to backtrack, you're talking about a theorem, right, that will allow one to generate or draw out nine equidistant points on a circumference. Well, and yes. And that, that'll give you your nine sided figure. And apparently, there is no there's way no way of doing it no with, way of doing it with a compass and a straight edge yeah which is basically euclidean geometry like in other words if you were t because that's what we're talking about like anything can be conceived but to actually do it now in what way you're going to define of doing it now it turns out with polygons as you define them you can construct all kinds but there's ones with certain number of sides you can't and what they noticed was that the number of sides when they're expressed as a number cannot be expressed uh, as a Fermat prime, which is just a, any number that's expressed to the base two to the power two okay. plus one, like a, as a prime, like it, in other words, it has to be expressible as that. Now, some numbers, you know, are like, uh, well, three, okay. you know, can be expressed at, to the base two and, right. and five and that. Okay. And nine can. But it can't be expressed only as numbers of the nature where the base is 2 to the power of 2. Like, there's no way of expressing 9 that way. It turns out that it's like, you know, 3 squared or something, you know. Okay, that doesn't make much sense to me, but what? Well, 3 can be expressed as the number 2. 
to the power of one to the power of zero plus one, and you have three. Okay. Okay. But nine can only be expressed that way twice, like two ways. In other words, two to the power of of one to zero plus one. Okay. okay. Times two to the power of one to the power of zero plus one. But you see what's happened is... No one will understand that part, <laughs> possibly, but because there's too many ones and zeros you're throwing out there at this point. The point is that nine can't be expressed. As a Fermat prime to the base power, base of two. Why to the power of two. First of all, why does it need to? Well, we don't know. That's just that's what I'm saying, that this is what Gauss observed. Well, well who, let's see, now you're bringing all these guys into the, into the conversation, but... The point is, we're talking about, first of all, as a, as a, as a speci specific example of metamathematics, how to just generate, how to create a nine-sided polygon, and well, there doesn't seem to be some a, a known proof for it. That's right. There's no way of. Well, there's actually there's no way of of proving that you can get out of doing it and proving that you've you've done it. it which means that you've got. On each point, as they as they go around the circle, there's 40 degrees arc between yes, each of the that's points right. around the 40 degree arc. Yeah, around the cir circumference of the circle, but you can't prove that. And I, I assume that Fermat primes are one of the, the ways of proving geometrical operations. Well, I don't know if it's it's not a proof; it's an indirect proof because it's only been observed that if you take the number, the, the ones that can't be drawn, seven, right, a nine-sided one or an 11-sided one, that when you take those numbers and try to express them as a Fermat prime to the base 2 to the power 2, that it can't, you can't. You know, but all the ones that can be drawn, like a 10-sided figure 10, you can take the number 10 and you can or express it to the power one? of 2. Or a 6-sided one, like an hexagon? Yes, that w can be too. Well, so which now, geometrical, so po which polygons can be expressed now many people can say by that this Fermat primes? Pardon me? Which polygons can be expressed via Fermat. Oh, well, a, two si a three sided, four sided, a five sided, a six sided, an eight sided, a ten sided, twelve sided, okay, so fourteen sided. So seven, nine, eleven, yeah. thirteen. Like all those can be. But the, the odd numbered. Some, they tend to be. Geometrical yeah, form. Odd number. Any geometrical even number polygons. Can be. But the, the odd number geometrical polygons above seven. So is that true of 17, 19? That no, that can, they can be drawn. A 17-sided figure can be drawn. Yeah. It can be? Yeah. It can be proven? Yeah, yeah. So it so can be drawn. It's been constructed. So, so from 7 to and 9 to 11, 13 also can't be? 13 can't be, no. How about 15? 15 can't be. Right, because it's yeah, yeah. divided by, yeah, yeah, so what divisible by 5. But what it turns out to be, it has more to do with, like, if you, the other way of expressing it, I guess, would be if you take the value of pi, Okay. And in terms of radians or something, you know, like you were to divide it by uh, like one half pi, and then divide that by nine. Okay. And you won't, you can't. What's a radian again? Construct it. What's a radian? Radian is that arc. Yeah. It's that arc. Right. The you angle of that arc. I know what a radian yes. is, but I, few, most people oh, won't know what a radian is. <laughs> listening to this. If well, it's the arc right. between radiations, like, you know, you think of the center of the yeah, circle, right. and there's these radiations yeah, an arc, yeah. that come out, yeah, right. and they cut the circumference of the circle here, and they cut it here, yeah. and that arc yeah. is the radian, yeah, the radian measurement. R-A-D-I-A-N. And, uh... But what, what... So, so the radian on a, a nine-sided figure is right. 40 But what degrees. it just indicates, it has more to do with the construction itself. Like the fact that you're just using the methods of construction. Yes, that you're just doing these two things, and you're so you're swinging your arc. Yeah, and then dividing it. Exactly, and, and, you, and then you're trying to somehow arrive at those points on the circumference, right. which will then somehow yeah. give you. It has more to do with just the the idea that you're always dividing, right. because although there's some things that are considered to be impossible since uh, yeah. antiquity in terms of geometry, like the the trisection of an angle. Yeah, you know, it, but it, but it's not, but it is possible to trisect a circle. In other words, to create a three a three sided polygon within a circle, although it's not possible to take any one of those angles and trisect.